What's up everyone, it's Ray J back with another video. And in this one, I want to break down what's happening with Neo, Tesla Spy, and a couple of other tickers, and break down what's happening with the overall market moving forward, talk about some big things involving the markets and the Fed, and what you should be watching for as time progresses. Well, let me just mention that I am not a financial planner. I'm sure you take nothing I say as financial advice. And also, if you guys can, please smash the like button. It not only benefits me, it benefits the entire community as a whole. Anyways, now let's talk about what's happening with the markets. Looking at NEO, we got this bit, this rejection off this $4 area. I said yesterday, if we broke $4, look for a big bounce in NEO, and this thing would start pushing much higher. If we rejected off 4 we'd, we'd be coming back down. And unfortunately, it ended up coming back down towards this imbalance. So share price remains bearish for now. That's despite the fact that the market attempted to rebound, but the market did sell off at the end of the day. And that's why we have some big catalysts to be talking about. For tomorrow, there's not really much coming out in terms of data. Uh, we basically only have like bill auctions around 11.30 a.m. and 1 p.m. And there's nothing else that's too crazy. We do have some jobs numbers coming out for Thursday. That's going to affect us quite a bit. Not to mention the Fed balance sheet and then a couple of Fed speakers. And then for Friday, once again, more and more uh, minor, minor data. We do have CPI, by the way, coming out for... Uh, we have PPI on Tuesday and CPI on Wednesdays of next week. So we're one week away from important data that's going to shake the markets. Until then, there's actually not too much coming out for Wednesday, which is tomorrow. Now, there's a lot of talk right now about the Fed. What are they going to be doing? Some Fed presidents are saying the Fed has to cut. Others are saying the Fed has to keep rates the same. You know, there's all sorts of like noise from all over the place. I just want to say that right now, it seems like the Fed is not going to give us an emergency cut. It also doesn't make sense for them to do so. Jerome Powell said the Fed's going to prioritize inflation. And we don't really have a big black swan event quite yet. We only saw unemployment spike a bit. But that's pretty much it. This is not like a market meltdown. This is not necessarily like a credit crunch event. So I don't, I don't think the Fed is going to give us an emergency cut as of right now. I think they're going to be waiting at least for the next CPI. So that is kind of like uh, being realized by the markets. Uh, it's part of why the market kind of rebounded just a little bit only to see another rejection. And now we also happen to have about a 71.5% chance the Fed gives us about 50 basis points worth, worth of cuts. So we'll see how that goes. The market is um, not as confident about the Fed giving us that much of a cut for now. Now, there's also a lot of talk about what's going on in the Middle East that's going to affect us too. So pay attention to that. For earnings, in case you guys are interested in playing these, we had Supermicro and Rivian. Both of them are down. Supermicro dropped really hard after missing on earnings, despite the fact that they have a 10 for 1 stock split. So what happened? EPS was a miss at $6.25 below expectations. Revenue is aligned with expectations at $5.3 billion. However, what's not too good is the fact that they're expecting their first quarter revenue between $6 and $7 billion, beating Wall Street's estimates. EPS is also expected to be $5.59. Uh, it's about $8.27 with a $7.48 midpoint. That's also, once again, below expectations. Not the best of news for Supermicro. For Rivian, they're topping Wall Street's second quarter expectations amidst the cost cuts. That's something else that's worth noting. The EPS was at a loss of about $1.13 adjusted versus the loss of $1.21. Uh, revenue is at $1.16 billion above expectations. But when it comes to the way things are looking, uh, things are not looking as strong for them. When it comes to the second quarter results, they're talking about how you know they, they basically got a lot of leverage thanks to VW. So that was a good piece of news. But when it comes to guidance, <laughs> excuse me, guidance was not necessarily the strongest. Uh, they have quite a few expenditures that's worth talking about and earnings were just kind of like so-so. So I would just say that uh, it wasn't really enough to really wow investors and they're going to be continuing to take measures to cut costs. So that's what's worth noting. Despite this, the share price is still in the red. On top of this, when it comes to NEO, we had their Chinese registrations data come out. NEO actually saw about uh, 20,500 vehicles delivered in July. And we got uh, a little bit of an increase when it comes to the weekly deliveries. So it says it right here. A nice increase to about 5,800 at least for the week. So that's technically good news for NEO, despite the fact that it dropped. And then there's also a lot of talk about how NEO eclipses 50 million battery swaps. That's evidence that people like the method. And they're saying that the majority of their users prefer battery swapping. It's very, very fast and convenient. And they really enjoy that. So that's something that's worth noting. Uh, I think that there's a, it depends on the audience. Some people do like to charge their cars at home, but other people would absolutely love to just swap out the battery very, very quickly. So it all depends, but that is something else that's worth noting. We're still seeing a lot of recognition for them. 
Uh, they, they achieved their 50 millionth battery swap for users only 140 days after hitting the 40 millionth swap. So that's showing more and more people are showing interest. That's about 79,000 swaps per day, which is insane. And that's very, very awesome for Neo, considering that this company has not been in business for as long as some people think. That's very impressive. And that's, you know, awesome news for them. We have 37 million in volume. It's a little bit below average, but short volume is also going up. And we're not seeing any changes from what I talked about yesterday. Just know that historically, Wednesdays are green only about 55% of the time. So now the question is, what's going to happen to NEO at least moving forward? So for NEO, we got to try to reclaim 3.85. If we reclaim this previous, uh, this is previous support becoming resistance, we will be going back up to four. If we fail and we start dipping, we're going to be looking for uh, 3.69. The chart is looking bearish for making lower highs and lower lows, and we are currently favoring a move all the way down towards the 3.6s. So I think that's a lot more favorable and a lot more likely. When it comes to other pieces of news, when it comes to SPY, we attempted to rebound. We pushed all the way up towards our 50 EMA. But the problem was SPY was not able to break it, and we got a bit of a rejection. So the question is, are we about to form a head and shoulders? Uh, we're going to be looking for a big test tomorrow. I think that SPY is going to gap down tomorrow and then try to retest 522. If we manage to break through the 522 to 523 area, we could rebound. If we get a rejection off our 20 EMA, this thing could start dipping lower. Watch support around this 518 area. If that fails us, 515 is next, then lower levels. So just be careful on SPY. This is a little concerning because when you look at the trend, we pushed, rejected. Now we're pushing again. Are we about to get a big rejection? There is a risk of that. If we end up losing... 518 and 515. We've got to try to break past 522 and eventually 528 to turn back up. If we don't break 528, we're going to likely see a rejection start dipping. So just be careful, guys, especially if you end up losing this 518 and 515 support. Just give it some time. We'll see how things go. But for SPY, like I said before, there's a potential rejection off our 50 EMA. There is a risk of downside. So just be careful. We'll just have to give this some time and see how things end up moving. For Bitcoin, Bitcoin's attempting to rebound. We're trying to hold above our 50 EMA. We have support currently at 56,000. If this fails, we'll be dipping all the way down towards the 54,500 area. And this could start dipping. To be bullish, you want to see this break past 57,000 to start pushing up higher towards these imbalances at 58,000. But this chart is still favoring downside. So just be careful. It might dip a little bit. I do see a little dip coming to the 55,000s. Be careful with Bitcoin, and we'll see if we get a bounce again. This is The trend is bullish, but there might be a short-term dip coming before it tries to bounce. So watch and see if we hold support. NVIDIA pushed all the way to about 108, only to reject. We're below our key EMAs. We need to reclaim 104.5 to turn back up. If we end up rejecting and losing 100, we're going to be turning back down to the 90s, especially 97.5. This chart's favoring. It's going to be coming back down to about 100. So watch and see if we get a big rejection on NVIDIA or not. But look at the trend on NVIDIA. It's still technically bearish. Why do I say that? It's very simple. Look, we had this high here. You know, This is a lower high compared to the previous high. Lower low, lower high, lower low, and another lower high again. So this does suggest we could get a rejection. So I do see a risk of us dipping to at least 100, but we have to see if we bounce or not off 100 to see if the trend breaks. But there is a risk of a little bit of downside. Tesla is no different. One concerning thing about Tesla is the fact that there's a possible head and shoulders. Now, it doesn't guarantee anything. It does not mean Tesla has to fall. If we end up breaking past 205, I think we turn bullish and this thing's going to be running to at least 208 and 210. But notice how we touched or came very close to touching our 50 EMA only to reject. And there still is that possible head and shoulders. If we lose 194, I think we're at risk of dipping all the way down to 188 all over again. And I still see this head and shoulders as a strong possibility. So just be careful, guys. There is that risk of downside. For the QQQ, we have 444 as our resistance. If we break through that, uh, we're going to be going all the way up towards 448, essentially. And then if we fail to break this resistance, this is where our 50 EMA happens to be. This could turn back down. So we're getting a little rejection right here. Watch support around 435. If we lose that, we turn bearish. If we break 444, we turn bullish. So that's our range. Lose 435, we're going to go back down. Break 444, we go back up. This chart is looking like it's rejecting a little bit. I think we might tip a little bit more to about 435 and we'll see if we bounce or not. But it all depends, guys. If you look at the trend, we're still making had this high here. We made a lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high. 
Are we about to get a rejection or not? We just have to wait and see. We did technically almost fill this gap up here, but is it enough for the QQQ to bounce? We got to get back above 444 at least. Otherwise, there is a, that risk of downside. So I just want to give you guys a warning about that, especially as tensions are rising in the Middle East. And there's a lot of fear about the Fed and the economy. For Apple, if we end up losing 202, we'll be looking for a dip all the way down towards 197. And if we break past resistance at 210, we could turn back up. Apple had a slight red dip. We're just range bound right now. So watch to see if you hold 205 and 202. If we lose 202, there'll be a dip. Let me go over just a few more real quick. Uh, look at our 50 EMA, this 207 area, and also at 204. If we get a rejection, we'll be dipping back down towards 200. If we break past 204, we'll be basically looking for 207. Might be a little dip. I mean, we are kind of rejecting right here, making lower highs and lower lows. Um, so we'll see how it goes. Uh, we, we're slowing down a little bit on the IWM. We haven't broken key resistance to really break out at 207. So there is a risk of us dipping back down to about 20, uh, 201. So we'll see if we hold that or not. So just be very, very careful. For Coinbase, we have a potentially a double top like structure that's forming. We're on a downtrend on coin. We got to try to break past 198 at least. 198, and this thing can start pushing. If we fail to do so, this does resemble kind of like a head and shoulders, if not a double top. So this could be like our head. This could be our left shoulder. And this could be the right shoulder. If we lose 185, this thing is going to be coming back down. I do see a risk of that. So I'm, I'm seeing that the market was trying to push in the morning. Now it's starting to slow down. Amazon needed to break past. 166 to turn back up we came just short of that and now we're barely holding 160 in the after hours if we lose 160 we're going back down to 158 in my opinion uh this is kind of forming a a big rejection structure it's possible not a guarantee so i'm a little bit concerned about this we might dip a little bit i think to 160 and we'll see if we, we break or not i'm still open to the levels but i do see a little bit of a dip coming to about 160 if not 158 and we'll see if we bounce same thing with Meta. Meta is showing some strength. We need to hold 482 and to 485, that entire range. We've got to hold that. If this holds, this could actually remain bullish. The structure is a little bit more bullish, but we got to hold support. We're dipping right now. we got to hold this. Where if we hold the support, look for a bounce back up to 502, then we could start running back up. If we lose support at 488, we're going to be dipping all the way down to about 485. Uh, 482 that's the main support we got to hold that if we reject it, we're going to be dipping all the way back down to the 470s okay so we got to hold our support we're going to be dipping a little bit but then we, if support holds we could try to bounce and go back into the 500s we got to hold that's all i care about for meta we got to hold the level it's going to dip a little bit tomorrow but if we hold it's going to bounce it all depends on the news and such microsoft is in the same boat we got to get back above 400 if we fail to hold 400 we could be dipping back down to about 394 i do see a risk of us dipping a little bit lower for google we're on a bit of a downtrend right here make sure you watch support at 158 and then look at resistance around 161 we're kind of failing to hold our 20 ema so i do favor downside all the way down towards 158. so google's looking kind of weak i'm seeing a little bit of weakness building in the markets uh we haven't lost critical support we attempted to bounce today but the market came just short so with this end of the day rejection, that does lead to concerns that there could be something coming, especially with all this news about the Fed and the news involving Israel. So we'll see how things go. Uh, I think the market's going to most likely kind of dip a little bit tomorrow morning and we'll see if we get a bounce or not. So that's what I see from my analysis. With that being said, I just want to say I appreciate you guys so much for listening. Have a great day and peace out.